In 1930, Niels Bohr solved a fundamental problem in physics, and by in physics, and by doing so, ushered in a quantum understanding of the atom. In 1911, Ernest Rutherford had come up with the planetary model of the atom. Most of the mass is centered in the nucleus of the atom, where the electrons are in orbit, much like planets orbiting our sun. But it had a fundamental problem. The electrons are in orbit, but because the electrons are accelerating, namely centripetal acceleration, according to the work of James Clerk Maxwell, it should be emitting electromagnetic radiation. The electrons in orbit should spiral in, therefore crash into the nucleus. Clearly, this doesn't happen. So therefore, we have a fundamental problem about Rutherford's model. This is where Niels Bohr comes in. He uses Max Planck's idea of the quantum nature of energy to come up with the hypothesis that the electrons can exist in specific discrete orbits and not emit radiation. What we have here is a model of the hydrogen atom, the nucleus in the center, and specific discrete orbits which the electron can exist in. The electrons cannot exist in any other place only in those discrete orbits. And each of these orbits have a specific energy value. The lowest energy is in the first orbit. Further up, we have higher energy values. We can label them as energy one, two, three, and four. Bohr proposed that an electron can jump to another energy level as long as it receives energy of a very specific amount, namely E equals HF. The energy required must be the difference between those two energy levels. E2 minus E1, Niels Bohr says, well, that is equal to HF, where F is a very specific frequency of the photon that the atom receives. Similarly speaking, if I go from E2 to E3, then the difference between them will give me a different amount of energy and that will be a different size of frequency. However, it's also true that the electrons can jump down a particular energy level and therefore release energy. The difference between the energy levels will result in a photon being emitted with a very specific frequency. So in other words, the photon that is being absorbed by a particular electron to go to a new energy level will be the same type of photon emitted by that electron. Now this fits perfectly with the conservation of energy. What if the energy of the photon that arrives does not fit the frequency that we have listed here? then nothing would happen. The electron would stay simply in the orbit. That photon would just pass by. With this idea, Niels Bohr was able to explain the emission and absorption spectra. When light passes through, let's say, a gas of hydrogen, the hydrogen absorbs very specific amounts of energy based on their frequency. So what you end up getting at the other side, a continuous spectrum with bands representing the missing frequencies. In other words, it's an absorption spectrum. But of course, this gas then starts to glow, but it'll only emit as those electrons jump down to the corresponding energy levels, specific types of frequencies. What we end up getting is an emission spectrum. Mathematically, the emission and absorption spectrum can be described as done by Rydberg and Barmer for hydrogen as one over lambda is equal to the Rydberg constant multiplied by one over n2 squared minus one over n1 squared. In the case of Bohr, n2 and n1 aren't just integers anymore. They are the energy levels. Since our energy is equal to hf and f is c over lambda, we get hc over lambda. This lambda is the same lambda that we have in this formula. As a result, using Rydberg's formula, knowing the energy levels that we are changing by, we can work out the wavelength and therefore work out the energy difference between the two energy levels that occurred in the emission or absorption scenario. I have a longer video on Bohr if you want further details, so check that out. Please like, share, and subscribe. Buy me a coffee to support my work. My name is Paul from Physics High. Bye for now.